Slay, 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 slay. What's up, book besties? Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited that you clicked on today's video. And if you're new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about everything that I read in March. We're wrapping up the month, uh, March wrap up, if you will. This month, guys, was an incredible reading month. I'm so grateful because it was an 10 out of 10. I'm so excited to share these books with you, share my thoughts, share my ratings, all that good stuff. We're just gonna hop into the video and start talking about these books that I read this month. I already touched on this in my February wrap up, but I am just gonna add this also to my March wrap up because I finished this on March 3rd, which was the same day that the Prime Show released. So Daisy Jones in six, I do count it as a March read because I primarily finished it in March. It's just the story of a band. This is literary fiction. So it's just telling the story of a band, how they got together, their journey to fame, all that good stuff. Really good. If you want to know more, check out my February wrap up because there I talk about it a little more. So the first actual read of the month was Icebreakers. So this is by Hannah Grace. It's an enemies to lovers, grumpy sunshine, where actually the female main character is the grumpy and the male character is just like this golden retriever, super nice, super cute guy, we stand him. Also, this is a sports romance. Now, me, I don't care about hockey. I've never watched hockey. So I kind of went into this like, let's see what it's about. I think I like hockey now. I still haven't watched hockey, but if Nate will be there, I'll be there. So this is actually the first book in what is going to be a series. The second book is gonna be coming out October 4th, but this is the first book and it focuses on Anastasia, who we know as Stasi, and Nate. Nate's a hockey player, Stasi's a figure skater. They're in college, it's also a college romance. They go to this really prestigious school that's known for like literally turning out professional athletes that go to the Olympics. So every sports team has their own facility and their own place to practice. So even though they're both on the ice, they have their own separate facilities. Something happens to the facility where the hockey players usually practice, so they can't practice there anymore. So they end up having to share the rink with the figure skaters. And this is where Sazi and Nate's story begins. I absolutely loved Nate. He was an excellent, beautiful, perfect male main character. I loved their relationship. There was little to no miscommunication. They communicated so well together, so it wasn't frustrating. There's also like beautiful, perfect found family in this. Like, it's just absolutely beautiful. You guys know I love found family. I did not expect to find that in here, but I was pleasantly surprised. I actually rated this a 4.75, very high rating, because I, I actually really enjoyed it. I gave this a five for a spice level out of five. Five out of five. The spice in this is off the chain, but it's really good. I love it. And I will literally be there first in line when the sequel comes out. I guess I'm going to have to pre-order it, but I'm definitely doing that. Although there were a lot of characters, I really did feel like I got a really good feel for each of them, and I'm interested enough to want to hear their stories. This one I actually read later in the month. It's Get a Life Chloe Brown, and I read this for Instagram Chooses, What I Read for a Week. So this one was recommended to me a lot. I was very excited to get into it, and it's also part of a series. Each of the sisters have their own story. This story is centered on Chloe Brown. The male character is Redford, but he's just called Red in the story for short. This is Enemies to Lovers and Grumpy Sunshine. The Grumpy is, again in this book, the female character, and Golden Retriever Energy for the man again. This story is about a girl who has a disability, so she's very sheltered, she stays home, she doesn't go out a lot because she suffers from chronic pain. But then she has like this life-altering experience one day and it makes her realize she's not living her life to the fullest. So she makes a list and she decides she needs to do all of these things before she dies or else when she does die, she's going to be so disappointed in the life that she lived. So, enters Red. It's really cute, it's a fluffy little romance. It takes place in London or like right outside of London. I gave it a 3.75 rating. I gave it a five out of five rating for The Spice. The Spice was also a lot in this book, which I was really surprised at because as I always say, these book covers, so misleading. So moving on to the next book. This book really just broke my heart into a million pieces. I read two really sad books this month and this was probably the saddest of them all. I would say personally that it's very character driven. The plot is there, but it's very character driven and I really actually like books that are very character driven if it's done right. So I really enjoyed this. This is by Laura Nolan. This is a YA contemporary fiction and it also has 
childhood friends to lovers. So uh, the two main characters are August, who's the girl, and Finn, who's the boy. They have literally, guys, I, I, let me tell you this part, okay? They've literally known each other since before they were even born. Their moms were best friends, and they were pregnant with them at the same time, and they would sit next to each other, and the babies would kick each other in their stomachs. I feel like that little fact alone tells you that you're going to have your heart crushed into a million pieces when you read this book, okay? Okay. It just follows their lives as they grow from literally being besties before they were even out of the womb and all the way until high school and after high school. The story begins, literally the first chapter begins with what happens and then it just goes back in time and starts from the beginning and brings you up to everything that happened until that moment. So just so you know, you will cry your eyes out, you will be depressed. I gave this a 4.5 star rating and I gave it a one out of five for the spice level. It wasn't super spicy or anything, but amazing, such a good book. And it really just reminded me why I used to love YA so much. You know, in high school, YA was like my age range, but it was just like so deep. Like I really, really enjoyed this, but also it hurt me a lot. Funny enough, the second book that broke my heart this month is up next. So I also read Normal People and actually this book and that book that I just talked about were also part of the Instagram chooses what I read for a week. So yeah, this is by Sally Rooney and this also ruined me. Sally Rooney ruined me. Yeah, she did. This is literary fiction and romance genre, and it also has childhood friends to lovers and enemies to lovers trope. I mean, kind of, like it basically has that enemies to lovers trope. This one also just follows them throughout the course of their life. The main characters in this book are Connell and Marianne. Both of these people come from broken homes, broken upbringings, and they find a way to each other, even though it's not totally acceptable in the town that they live in, in the school that they go to. Like it's not acceptable that they would be together so they are just navigating teenagehood and we get to see them grow up to be adults and the whole thing is just sad like it just never gets happy talks a lot about mental health i would definitely say check trigger warnings for this and for if you had been with me trigger warnings for suicide self-harm there's probably more that i'm not thinking of but definitely worth the read. I gave this five stars, like no doubt about it. I was crying when I finished it. I gave it a three out of five, although looking back now, I think I'd probably give it like a four, like a 3.5 out of five. It's not super spicy, but there's definitely enough in there that it could be like a 3.5 to a four out of five for the spice level. Next up we have Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. I also read this earlier in the month. Um, I had really, really high expectations for this because people talk about it so highly and I didn't hate it, but I don't think it lived up to my expectations. I was super drawn in and intrigued by the fact that they're both authors who are writing about each other. Like that really reeled me in. This is a romance book with childhood friends to lovers trope in it. And our main characters are Genevieve, who becomes known as Eva and Shane. So let's talk about what I liked. I thought that their love story, their connection, their chemistry was so strong when they were adults that it, it leaped off the pages. Like I really, really loved Shane and Eva as adults. I thought that the beginning was, the beginning threw me off a little bit, you know? That's like, maybe I'm being nitpicky, but the beginning kind of threw me off. And then I did also think that the teenage story was really intense and kind of like made me just a little bit uncomfy. I really love Shane's character. Shane's character is just like amazing. I loved his character development from when he was a teenager to what he decided to do with his life as an adult. However, I just felt like the story was very inconsistent. I felt like started off strange, got really, really good, and it like continued to be very good. And then it just fell flat for me at the end. I felt like for like the last 20 to 30 pages of the end, it was just dragging on for reasons that I couldn't understand because it was giving me nothing. It was just filler. And I was like, this is so unnecessary. In the end, I only gave this a 4.25 rating. Um, I just felt like it just didn't have that five star quality for me, even though so many people love this book. And like I said, I think it's a good read, but it just, it didn't do it for me. And I have to be honest, you know? Also, I gave it a rating of three out of five for the spice level. These next books are part of a series that I'm still working my way through. And this series has low-key been becoming my personality. 
I don't know if you noticed my shirt, but it definitely says Hates Gallery. Magnolia Parks I picked up in the beginning of the month. This was a very highly anticipated read for me and it delivered for me. It really did. And I could not stop thinking about it. I had to immediately go and order the rest of the books in the series. I was like, I know what I'm doing for the rest of this month. Our two main characters for this book are BJ Ballantyne and Magnolia Parks. Magnolia Parks is the name of the book. It's set in London in high society. It's part of the romance and new adult genres and it has childhood friends to lovers. It has brother's best friend, it has cheating trope, all of that stuff, okay? It's so, so toxic. I mean, like the level of toxicity is actually astounding. I don't know if I've ever read a story with a couple this toxic. I don't think I have. I think this one is number one for me. However, I really loved The Found Family. The Found Family was extremely heartwarming. I really loved Magnolia's relationship with Henry. It's so sweet. And I'm like, how are you like this Henry? And BJ's like that. How? How did that happen? And how do you let that happen? Listen, we may need to have a discussion about this book for anybody who's read it. We may need to like really dissect and psychoanalyze these characters because they're so messed up. But I digress, I digress. I gave this a five star rating because I absolutely ate it up. And I gave it one star for spiciness. It's not that spicy, um, it was pretty, pretty clean from what I can remember. So it's called the Magnolia Parks universe, but book one is Magnolia Parks, book two is Daisy Hates, book three is Magnolia Parks, The Long Way Home, and book four is Daisy Hates, The Great Undoing. So we're looking at two different characters here, two different storylines that are like intermixed, but it's all part of the Magnolia Parks universe. All the characters kind of cross over, like they're all part of the same world. So when you're reading Daisy Hates, you're still hearing about Magnolia, BJ, the whole gang. So it's beautiful. Daisy Hates focuses on none other than Daisy Hates. Daisy Hates is the main female character in this book and Christian Hems, who is from Magnolia's world, is the main male character. We also have Julian who also gets his own point of view in this because Magnolia Parks, you only get Magnolia and BJ, I believe. But in this one, you get Daisy, Christian, and Julian, her brother's point of view. So this is a gang family, okay? They're all involved in gang business. They are art thieves. I mean, you name it. They're thieves of a lot of things, but they're really known for their art. Hence, the Hates Gallery. I actually had such a new perspective of Christian because of this book. So I'm really, really happy this book came out because he went out bad in Magnolia Parks, but I feel like here it was so good. I just like loved the fact that neither of them could just like own up to their feelings. Like I was just there for all the tension. I'm like, you guys are so stupid. You could be happy. This one is toxic, but not as toxic. I actually really, really loved Daisy's character. I felt like her character was Actually, this may be controversial, but I think Daisy is a stronger female character than Magnolia is, which made it bearable to get through her story after the Magnolia Parks fiasco that just happened. This one is also romance, new adult, has brother's best friend trope, and I did give this a 4.5 rating. I really liked it, but it just didn't have that five star quality, but I have a feeling that Daisy Hates The Great Undoing is gonna be five stars. I just have a feeling because of where we left off and where the story could go. I also gave this a four out of five for the spice level. All the books in the Magnolia Parks universe are written by Jessa Hastings. Alrighty guys, and just like that, we have arrived on the last book that I read for this month. I just finished it up yesterday and I absolutely loved it. I cannot stop thinking about it and I really like as soon as possible need to head over to Barnes and get book two because I'm obsessed. Like I, I loved this book so much more than I thought I was going to. That was The Atlas Six written by Olive Blake. It is a dark academia fantasy. You have some romance, you have some enemies to lovers, some enemies, just straight enemies. You have multiple points of views, which I really enjoyed. Our main characters in this book are Libby, Nico, Parisa, Tristan, Calum, and Raina. This book is about six super extraordinary magicians, but they're actually called medians in this book. But essentially it's like the equivalent of a magician and they're chosen because they're so incredible, they're so powerful, and they're chosen to join this Alexandrian society. But the only thing is that only five of them are going to make it. So there's six of them and five of them have to prove that they are worthy of being formally chosen to be a part of the Alexandrian society. So you have all these characters, all these personalities coming together. I absolutely love this book. I thought that the characters were so, so interesting. I actually gave this a five star rating. I think it was absolutely beautiful. I give it like maybe like a one to two out of five for the spice level but it kept it interesting and um like i said 
super excited to read the next one. That is the end of my wrap up. So this month I read eight books. It was a really great reading month. I'm so happy with everything that I chose and everything that I got to read. I'm super excited for April. April's feeling like it's gonna be a little fantasy heavy because a lot of the books that I wanna read are fantasy, but I'm very excited because I love fantasy. I think I am a romance girl at heart and then after that fantasy that's gonna be the end of today's video thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next one when you're not here the sun don't shine when you're not near i don't feel like i do when you're